it is always bringing me back to to where I come from, to my roots. And uh, often I ask myself, um, if I if I don't think, if I just play and improvise in the moment, um, what comes out? What comes out from me? And that was mostly um, world music or like my uh, Balkan roots with the mixture of everything that I did till now. Vanya, it's it's so great to see you. And the last time I saw you was um, during lockdown and you sang so beautifully for me on the oh, stage. thank you. <laughs> no, I remember that. That video video got quite a lot of reaction. And I remember somebody wrote to me, somebody that I didn't even know that wrote, and who's this beautiful, uh, who's singing, you know, and, and who has this beautiful voice. So I oh. always remember, yeah, I always remember that video very fondly. But tell me now, um, a lot has happened since we saw each other. And I've seen on, on Instagram also that you've done so much and you so... Um, you're doing such great work. And I recently saw that you did this um, piece, this music arrangement uh, for a documentary. Tell me about yes. this. Yes, yes, that's a documentary um, about um, a nun uh, in a female monastery in Montenegro. Uh, a couple of um, guys went to <clears throat> simply... Uh, on the holidays and uh, wanted to visit that monastery and they found out that uh, it's their place where they stayed. So like monastery, they have a monastery and then they have the, they have the building that's uh, where they were living in. So out of some political reasons uh, that got destroyed. Um, yeah, to get some votes. I don't want to get so much into yeah, the <laughs> into that, yeah, yeah. yeah, into the politics. Yeah, mm -hmm. anyways, they decided to um, try to gather some money for them and to make a documentary about them so that they would, uh, it's, so it would be like a humanitarian thing. Uh, so they would yeah. get the, gather some money to help them to rebuild. And um, they are getting some help. Um, the documentary is still not released because uh, the nuns asked us uh, not to do, do it as long as they don't get the permission to build oh, uh, again, yeah. which is yeah, which is fair and uh, yeah. completely right. They don't yeah. want to go and in, get into any troubles, of course. Of course exactly. We also don't want to get into any troubles. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and they... Um, they asked me then to arrange a song that um, uh, someone wrote for um, for the documentary mm -hmm. lyrics and uh, melody, and I arranged. I made the whole arrangement, and okay. I hadn't. Yeah, so I had an idea. The song already exists, mm -hmm. and uh, was uh, the melody was written by someone else. And I had an idea to make it with more voices. So, wow, uh, because it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful, because, really. Yeah, because it's an Orthodox, uh, in Orthodox um, churches, um, only voices are singing. So there is no, mm. there are no instruments. I did add instruments. But I wanted to make it a little bit closer to uh, a church music, uh, oh, yeah. Orthodox church music, yeah. But this is um, was for me, this was for me so interesting that I felt you you feel something when you hear this uh, music and when you hear the singing. Um, and I recently did an interview with a professor at the at Pachastrum University. Well, I say Pachastrum has got another name now, but a uh, Northwest University. And he actually did a project where he um, investigated how we, without understanding the words of a song, the lyrics, that we could sense what it's all about. And he had artists that that 
did um, artworks from music that they didn't understand. And they were actually spot on with what the meaning was from, you know, from even the words that they didn't understand. And when I heard, I, I didn't know what this was all about, but it did touch me in a way. And the way you did it, the music was really so beautifully done. You can, you can sense what it's, what it's all about. You know, I mean, I didn't know the whole story, but you sense that there's a, a sort of, um, uh, t a sincerity and a tenderness around it. I totally agree <laughs> with that. Um, I didn't know about this research, but um, we all musicians know that um, music is a universal language. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I was thinking also when I'm um, writing my own things in in Serbian, sometimes. Uh, People are ask, asking me like, oh, is someone going to understand what you're, yeah. what you're thinking about what you're saying? And that was also a little bit of my concern. But exactly as what you said, I uh, think that uh, you can feel mm. what the meaning behind it is. Because it's almost, if I may say uh, to me, a little bit magical because yeah. you don't really understand the words. Yeah. But the person that that thinks about something can feel herself or uh, himself what is it about and then transmits in that way that that person feels the music exactly so what the audience gets is exactly what that person feels mm -hmm. we maybe don't understand words but we can understand and emotions there is also a little bit of it. so there is something going on, maybe subconsciously, that we can all then understand. Maybe, of course, not literally word by word. Yeah, uh, yeah. Everyone, no, but you, but, yeah. yeah. It's a, it's beautiful that everyone can understand on, in their own way. Yeah. They take what is important for them. It they, they take what moves them, and I think that is beautiful. Yeah. yeah. No, I I totally agree with you there. But um, now tell me about, the, and, and you also doing other projects. I see also that you're, you're in a duo together uh, singing. Yes, I, uh, I mm, the thing is, I love music. And uh, in the beginning struggled to focus on only one <laughs> direction. Oh, okay. So... Uh, well, during my studies, during my studies, like my um, colleagues, they maybe had one band that they were completely focused on, and I was all over the place. So, oh, okay. <laughs> because I find in every in every genre, I find something beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I I like I, I sing with a punk band uh, backing vocals, and uh, I love Latin music, so I sing in salsa band. Uh, jazz is always something that brings me back or takes me, always pulls me back, mm -hmm. how to say. Uh, and um, so I do different things. So also you mentioned duo. Yeah. That is that is um, with my colleague from uh, Salsa Band. We actually okay. also started together. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, her name is Anna Maurer. Maurer. And um, we just like to play together and decided to record uh, the Peacocks uh, jazz piece. And uh, we once met at her place and we were just jamming. Actually, we were uh, rehearsing for, uh, for next concert for Salsa Band. And then I said, like, oh, it would be nice to do something together because uh, I think we understand each other very well. And I told her that I like this song very much and it would be nice that uh, maybe we try that. So we uh, tried to jam a bit, we played and it was perfect. We understood each other without mm. any words. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, so, that's great. That, so there was really no, we didn't need to rehearse much. We just met and we played and and that was it it's it's we understand each other in the moment and that's why we decided then to record 
uh, that song. We actually recorded two songs. Mm -hmm. The other song I didn't release because uh, we are thinking of uh, recording an album. Okay. Uh, the end of from end of August when when I'm back from Serbia. Okay. Um, so yeah, I hope that will happen um, because I think working with her is mm -hmm. wonderful. Well, what I've what I also hear from other musicians and well, also from from different people and in, in different fields of art, that you learn so much from each other when you work together, when you collaborate like that, and you get something from each other. And uh, I remember talking to a duo, um, a harpist and a and a soprano, and they also talked about this, where you almost. Um, uh, you learn or you 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 get what the other person's doing and that also makes an influence on what you're doing. I think that when you play together, you do learn a lot from each other on the spot. Um, I think that's why it's important to listen to each other, uh, to listen how the other person is phrasing, for example, or what is their style. And it kind of combines with your style together because that person also listens to you. Oh, yeah. And there you create you create a new language um, that you take then with you. <laughs> and if you the, if you play with more musicians often, then you will also always take something from them. And that's how you also create then your own language. This is this is very interesting, and I think this is this is what also helps you um, understand and easier and more uh, the next time you play with someone. But it's you so, are actually yeah. yeah, you are actually lucky that you have these different interests because I also speak to people who are just focused on one specific thing, on one specific genre, for example, and they are very happy doing that, and they. But then I speak to quite a few people that that um, that say this thing, you know, that they have different play different genres or sing different genres, and that from every genre also you learn something or you, you know, they overlap in the end. You take something from each genre. Yeah, yeah. It's it's also. I mean, it's it's great when you um, can focus on one genre, um, and. Of course, in the end, there, there is also danger if you do so many different things. Oh, if yeah. you play so many different genres that you will lose yourself or that you will lose your authenticity in the end. So it is always important to keep the balance. So uh, while uh, during my studies, at the, as I said in the beginning, mm -hmm. I was all over the place. I tried, I did musical, I did uh, um, I don't know, jazz and funk and soul and uh, did gospel. Um, but interestingly, in the end, it always uh, calls me back to my roots. Really? Um, my mother told me once while I was uh, playing classical violin, she told me, oh, you have a beautiful voice. You should sing uh, our folk music. I was like, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm way too cool. So I want to do some cooler stuff. I want to do yeah. like funk and I want to do jazz. I, I love jazz and Latin yeah. music. And but in the end, now I see that she was <laughs> really she was, she was right. Um, it is always bringing me back to to where I come from, to my roots. And uh, often I ask myself um, if I if I don't think if I just play and improvise in the moment. Um, what comes out? What comes out from me? And that was mostly um, world music or like my uh, Balkan roots with the mixture of everything that I did till now. Like from, wow. mm. it sounds sometimes be jazzy, sometimes uh, like film music because it's all combined with everything that I did till now. And I think that now only I am seeing that or getting the form or of my 
authenticity. Because I thought I was, I thought that was a struggle for me. I thought that really like, oh my God, I talked to my I talked with my professor, said, Oh my god, like everyone has their own way, and I'm I I cannot decide simply. <laughs> but she was um she's a, she's an amazing professor and um Who is she told she? me just to be patient. Uh Patricia Simpson. Okay. Yeah. She's uh, teaching on MDV and popular department. And she told me to be patient. Mm. And and from that's also me being interested in more genres is not really a bad thing. Yeah. But and maybe you had to do all that to to be able to find what what is I think yours. So. I think so because before before I um before I started singing I was I don't know if you know I I was a classical violinist. Oh, okay. I grew, I grew up as a, a classical musician mm-hmm. till I was, I don't know, let's say 19. Okay. 19 or 20. And I was focused on classical. Mm-hmm. And I had a mindset of a classical musician. I would play everything that was in front of me. I was, um, but the thing is that, I'm, and that was amazing. I learned so much. But always in the in the back of my head, I was wondering, hmm, how would it be if I would improvise? Mm-hmm. Or how would it be um, if I tried something else? I even asked a friend of mine um, while I was still in Serbian school, like, do you ever do you ever have the wish just to to play maybe another instrument? Mm-hmm. And he played cello. I said, no, for me, cello is, that's it. And he still plays cello. (laughs) He still (laughs) plays cello. (laughs) And my questioning, I was questioning back then. And um, I mean, I'm not playing violin. uh, I I am playing violin still, but out of uh, some other reasons, I had some troubles, some physical problems. Mm. So I had to stop playing violin during my studies here. But after after some time, after I healed, I started playing again. And um, since I do also another type of music, I understand classical um, a bit better. Really, I can see from the, from a different angle. I am. Yes, after uh, studies of, <clears throat> uh, studies of jazz harmony and composition. I could see a lot of similarities too. Mm. And and the way I play violin now is is of course a bit different because I don't have any more that pressure you have to, you know, achieve, you have to be good, you have to like I just started playing it uh, playfully. Oh, okay. Mm. So yeah. Yeah, but now um it's I think it's more difficult to improvise. You know, because you with when you when you have the notes in front of you and you have and you know how to play it, it's I wouldn't say easy, but I mean you have the structure. But the moment you have that, where you step out of that structure, you have to think differently. Well, I think it everything has its own difficulty, of course. Oh, okay. Uh, if you if you have to play. Uh, from what is written and you really have to understand what is there and you have to interpret it um, the way you feel it in one, in one, on one hand, but on another, you should stick to, in my opinion, now we can discuss about this, but yeah. in my opinion, you should stick to the genre that, that you're playing. If you're playing Baroque, you should play it in that way that oh, yeah. it was yeah. played, mm-hmm. but also adding something some of something of what is yours, your authenticity. This is also very difficult. But with improvisation, it's also difficult because your improvisation is basically composing on the spot. Oh yeah. But there are always you also have a form. Mm. If you if you practice improvisation in the beginning, it's it's maybe challenging and difficult, especially for me, it was as a as a classical musician, it, it took me some time because Oh my God, I cannot improvise. <laughs> you know, that's, the, that's what uh, so many classical musicians say. No, I cannot do it. But they can. Mm-hmm. You have They have such a developed hearing and amazing skills on their instruments, so they can do it. 
And of course, they have imagination and they have oh, yeah. creativity, but simply because you're used to mm-hmm. play from the notes, you are afraid of everything. Of People are afraid of everything that is new. Yeah. But once you get into improvisation, well, it's, I cannot say that it is difficult. Mm-hmm. It's simply different. It's, a, as you said, a different mindset. Yeah. You learn, the, you all, you know, the, uh, you need to know the harmony that is happening in one piece. And then you practice over that harmony. And once you learn uh, what is there, where does it lead on the stage, you forget everything. And then you trust your instincts and then you trust your oh, okay. uh, your subconsciousness and it comes <laughs> out naturally in, in, in um, best case scenario. Okay. So you don't anymore think oh my god now this uh, chords leads to i don't know this harmony and now i need to <laughs> i need to harmonize it right away no it's you just let it happen you you're like a explorer on the stage amazing but do you did that also by playing the violin and knowing the music do you think that also helped when you started singing different genres that you knew you had the basses and I yes. so you knew the music. Oh, that helped me a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I already, uh, as you said, I knew the music and uh, it helped me. I was faster. Okay. If I would have to learn something new um, because of violin, and my intonation was never really a... A thing, never really a problem. And you can learn faster if you have the classical background. So I think I would agree. But of course, I know also a lot of uh, a lot of other colleagues that don't have the classical background, but they're so talented and they are also as fast as I oh, really <laughs> in learning as I am. Like everyone has, you know, it's it's always difficult to say, you know, what is better and yeah. what is not because it's uh, it's never black and white. There's yeah. all, it's always in the in the middle. So there were things that I was struggling with um, that were easy for someone who didn't have the classical background and the other way around. Yeah, I was struggling, for example, yes, with with this uh, freedom of improvisation. And of letting go the notes, not learning anymore by what was it written. Because especially in jazz, we do have like uh, something called a real book or a fake book with lots of songs written, a lot of jazz standards. But also the written songs are, they're like just, um, how do you say, skitze. They're like just a, a orientation. Okay. So you have the melody, you have the chords written above, but even the melody is not really exact because it was, as I, if I can remember, done by uh, students that wanted to write down jazz music, and uh, they were listening from the from the records and writing them down. So wow. there are also a lot of mistakes, or and, and in jazz you always interpret it different. You you play always with the melody. You don't sing. Uh, one song the same way so every time it's something new and you have like the melody and the chords written above and uh, that's it the rest is is your imagination your knowledge amazing. and your creativity wow that's and, amazing so you take it's it's like a, um, the, that freedom that you have then to make it your own yes Yes, I love that. I love that you can you can play with peace and and interpret it in a way that it's it makes sense for you. Mm-hmm. The but way you feel it. Yeah, no, so you sing also you say the folk music, that's something that you also that you think it's it's your thing. But that, <laughs> is that how how different is that then from singing jazz? Mm, that's a good question. I didn't really think about that. Um Actually, it's not. It's not different. 
really it's not yeah. it's not you have a melody and then everyone sings their melody uh in their own way you don't mm. even like usually the folk songs don't even have a, a composer it's okay. often anonymous so every even the maybe let's look at the regions maybe every region in a country interprets the song differently oh yeah mm. or someone changes a word mm. or you know if they're, they're usually songs that the people sing with with each other together or to their children so they they always give something new yeah that's that's actually true because in afrikaans if i think afrikaans folk songs also we do that you know it, yes it sometimes change certain words change in certain areas of the country yeah. maybe yeah. that's why it fascinates me, it fascinates yeah. me so much mm. and it, it and it's really not really like balkan music it's in general folk music i i am i love celtic music and as i said latin american music and actually any music that brings the culture of one country of one region of one mm. culture um that fascinates me because these are the stories that are very authentic and and if i may say raw something that yeah. comes from the people's uh, wishes and suffering and their daily lives and exactly um, yeah it is a mirror of the culture actually 100% yeah it would be fascinating um to hear you sing afrikaans oh afrikaans i will have to try it. <laughs> <laughs> next time we meet i, yes, will, yes. I will do that <laughs> i will do that yeah that would be so interesting but um but you also teach because we spoke yesterday and uh, you have a student that you supported with the exam so tell me about your teaching yes um how did it yeah, go for the exam by the way uh it was a competition oh a competition okay she she got the first prize oh wow congratulations yeah. to her and to you and thank you and she's also invited to go to national competition in wow in september i'm so happy and yes. she's also because yeah. uh, i don't i told you that she she got sick a couple of days mm. ago and her voice was not fit but i was so proud of her because she managed to as a professional to uh work around the difficulty that uh, she has while being sick like you often as a singer simply have to sing i sang musical with a very high fever and and such a big throat pain but you still manage it if you listen to your body if you if you know from where to get the energy so yeah and this is me part as as a teacher i like to I think what is the first and most important thing for me is to help my students get to know themselves and their body and how to work with that. To help them uh, really develop their voice in a way that is natural for them. And my professor would say, like, to find the inner voice. Oh, really? Yeah, to yeah. find your inner authentic mm -hmm. voice. So, and, yeah, and this is a, obviously part of it because when you play an instrument, it's it's the instrument, but when you sing, it's your voice that's the instrument. So whatever you feel that day or, um, you know, also it, it must be part, affect the voice, you know, if, if you have also a bad day or if you are not feeling well so it must affect the voice so i can imagine that it's important also for a singer to learn that yes yes it's mm -hmm. it's really important because as i said you don't you often don't have this liberty to say to say no yeah and um but it's good because you learn your strength 
Hmm. And you learn actually that you can do much with your voice and then you can actually uh, do a lot. I think that the people often think that a voice is so fragile, hmm. but but it can handle so much actually. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Um, and of course, it's very individual. You have hmm. to, yeah, it depends on the person and... Uh, yeah, but I, I I saw in my work and working with others that like you should be careful with your voice, but again, not too careful. Because if you start being too careful, believe me, you you will start feeling sick. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> it will be like, oh, I have to be uh, not too cold, not too uh, not too sour, and yeah. then you you will get into this. Um, this protective mode that that will that will block you oh yeah and, and you will get more often sick and it will probably bring anxiety or also you know that you yes. start feeling that as well yeah so it's it's there is no one rule for all mm. so everyone is individual it's also for me, I love teaching um, singing because it's so individual. When a first time student comes to me, I never n know what will happen. And I always let the communication and also my intuition um, help me reveal what in which direction uh, would it be nice to, to guide that student. So it's, it is very individual and this is wonderful because you always have to be flexible and you have to, as when you play together, you have to listen yeah. and you have to, um, how to say, um, you have to be flexible to, to um, I forgot the word. <laughs> Mm. um to simply doesn't matter uh you have to simply um be open mm. to work differently with oh, I see, each yeah. student so mm. if you do what the student needs mm. and my my another uh, singing professor told me once because i i was often in the beginning giving too much of myself and trying giving too much energy and and she told me, like, you need to leave the space for the student to also take responsibility and to decide where that student, okay. where she or he wants to go. Mm -hmm. And then you give that what that student requires from you. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Because everybody yeah. also develops at their own pace. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that is so that is uh, so visible with singing because singing is, you cannot like with instrument is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, you have an instrument and it's already made instrument. So it has a certain sound, you need to learn how to play it. Mm -hmm. With voice, um, it is your own instrument and this instrument can change. And the instrument needs time to, to start to uh, build their own colors or um, the own uh, the style and so on. So some students some students get it fast and understand uh, very quickly what what I want or require from them. And some student, students need more time to, uh, to get to know first their instrument, their body, because many people also live their lives without feeling their physical body so much. Mm -hmm. And that is so important because of, um, for me, for example, it's important to understand how does my instrument function? Mm -hmm. What happens when I sing? What happens with breath? uh where do i get the the power what what happens with my throat and and vocal cords this is of course you can also sing without knowing knowing that mm -hmm. if you already have this sensibility if you 
um, if you have a talent. Um, but I think that for me, it's interesting to know what is happening. And I think that that will only help you progress, not, not only as a musician, but also for other things. Mm. Because while you're singing, you also have to uh, observe what is going on in your mind. Because okay. everything, all the, like, if you have some anxieties or if you have some troubles, uh, that will reflect on, on your muscles because uh, everything that is going on emotionally uh, is also um, showing physically. So it impacts your singing too. And this is what we were also in the beginning talking about because um, this is how the other people can feel oh, what yeah. you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Also, yeah. yeah, no, and and yeah, of course, also there's a lot of pressure on uh, young singers or a young artist to because they, they it almost you get the sense that things have to happen at a certain time. So people are very much in this uh, in this role, you know, from okay, you have to do this then and this then and this then, and that's not always. Right, and I think that's no. not always supposed to be like that. No, not at all. Like I mm. noticed now, especially after the pandemics, uh, my students are coming very tired to my lessons, mm. and um, there's so many things that so much pressure and requirements, and so I don't want to give them an extra yeah <laughs> pressure is like what i always tell that tell, tell them is uh, see our singing lessons as your a safe place mm -hmm. as a place where it's only for you where you can only focus on yourself on your needs and what you want with your with singing so i think that yeah sure i mean everyone has different ambitious ambitions I so depending on what student wants again there are some students that they like to sing but they like to sing for fun and oh, yeah. they will not be they will not study music they will not they will do something else but love music and they, that they do it because they have fun so I also don't pressure them oh, let's do now competition or let's you know oh, yeah yeah I I have like I tr I try to see them to find the middle. Mm -hmm. They tell me what they want. I also, of course, as a teacher, have my own um, vision mm -hmm. for each student. So we try to to uh, find each other in the middle. Mm -hmm. We should have fun, and it is nice to like you sing for fun. And I also, but I also explain them that if, as as every hobby, if you do a hobby and if you don't move a little bit forward after some time, yeah. it gets boring. Mm. So I try to motivate them to for them to be interesting to to learn new stuff mm. without them noticing. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> without feeling the pressure. pressure. Yeah. yeah, this is very difficult. Uh, I think every every uh, teacher would agree with me. Mm. It, it, it is always, of course, difficult, um, but it's important. Mm. It's important to think about that. And it's always important to, as a teacher to ask yourself, uh, am I overseeing something? Mm. Or am I, how, how was I teaching today? Did I push too hard or was I too soft or was I... Could I could I have uh, explained something differently? Mm -hmm. But this is so important that uh, we realize also that teachers are so important because you yeah. are really uh, sort of this the person to to discover or to to help or to motivate or and and this this I really noticed a lot in during lockdown when I photographed the the music students. 
um, where they talk about their professors, you know, and how these professors supported them during the time in lockdown, uh, where they had, I don't think always the lessons were the thing, but it was that encouragement that sort of, hey, let's, you know, hang in there or that type of thing. Yeah, it's it's yeah. very important because we, ha we have uh, individual lessons, mm -hmm. only two people. And uh, the the relationship is gets complex and it's important. Uh, we have as teachers very big influence, also outside of the music world. Mm -hmm. We sometimes don't realize that children do remember a lot of things that we say. Yeah. the way we say it mm -hmm. so it is important for us to to always know how to say something not to hurt anyone not to belittle to really try and uh yeah simply 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 be kind mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> simply be kind well, and I, sometimes yeah. And sometimes in the also you said about the pandemics. Um, sometimes I had students that just came and wanted to talk, mm. and that was okay. Yeah, because they they didn't have anyone to talk to. They had to be at home. They could come to the lessons, but that's it. And that was that was fine too. So uh you you are not only a teacher you are a mentor you are a friend and yeah you have to also learn how to be close enough but not too close <laughs> yeah well it, i spoke to a pianist the other day and he mentioned his teacher in high school his piano teacher who opened up the world of classical music for him and if it wasn't for this teacher that he wouldn't have pursued this career and you think this one person made such a huge difference in his life and then you realize how important the the teachers of the musicians or artists are yeah and mm -hmm. just yesterday uh, my student before the competition she came to me and said you know i'm thinking actually Maybe to study music. Really? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> to support you. <laughs> yeah, you see, so you're, yeah. Great that yeah. you have this, that, that influence on her. Not influence in, in that positive influence on her. Yeah. But yes, I also, I, I remember all of my teachers. Mm. And they were all part of my musical family. And my violin professor, he had such a big influence on me, not and also as a musician, but not only as a musician, as a person. He mm -hmm. taught me so much. He was because I was um, in music school from, from I was six. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a different school. It's a it's a school for musically gifted children with dormitory. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so the kids all over Serbia and, and there were also some children from the neighboring countries. Um, we spent most of the time there. Like I would be there on week uh, home on weekends. But some some uh, students didn't go also on weekends home. So we had our teachers were really important to us. Mm -hmm because they were also kind of our caretakers. Oh, yeah. And, and because I, I, I'm so thankful that um, I, I changed some teachers during uh, my school times, but then I stayed with that teacher till the end. And I'm so grateful that, that I had him because I learned so much. And I know how important this relationship is. Mm. Also later in this, during the studies uh, with Patricia and with other professors, 
Uh, we also, for example, we have this liberty to, we have one main professor in university, but we all have, also have a second one that we always change every semester, every year, so that we okay. get more mm. inputs, inputs from different professors. And that's so important. But she was, of course, the one that was uh, with me during the studies the whole time. And, and she helped me so much. Amazing. This and, is so yeah, wonderful so, to hear, yeah, these stories. And it's a, it's, also, sorry, it's I just want to say it's also it's a big responsibility, of, of course. course. So, yeah. so we have to keep in mind mm -hmm. that exactly what I said, the the students uh take with them seriously what you tell them. And also you instill the love for the for the music and the art form. But this also brings me back to this idea and this is also something that I'm working uh, this is the reason why I have this also this platform is where I would love to um, make people aware of the fact that music and art should be taught in schools alongside maths and science because like you said now teaching an art form is not just about the art form there's so much around it and that's so much, and this I also discovered through the project that I did during lockdown, that um, artists are equipped with certain uh, characteristics or and, and, and skills that's outside of the art. You know, the, the perseverance, the motivation, self-motivation, um, work ethic, and all those things, that those are skills that you acquire through uh, pursuing an art form so you don't have to become a musician but you have acquired these skills through studying art and and I don't know I, I, I'm not saying you don't acquire that through studying maths but I do think there's a different skill set that you develop and and uh, emotional maturity also that you develop through studying an art form yes um it's when you study art, um, as you said, like in math, it's it's maybe different in that way because um, you need more parts. Uh, more parts of your brain are active mm -hmm. while you're while you're doing music or art. Yeah, and and it also helps you um, mature as a person. Because you have to play a lot with, you have to think a lot of about symbols and uh, and the meaning and um, yeah, I think I think that is why it's like reading reading a, a book or 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 painting, for example. Painting, you also you also develop your own language. It's also, for example, if you're painting or if you're composing, a lot of your uh, subconscious thing come out that you're maybe not yeah. aware of. But mm -hmm. when you when you paint, many things come out from the subconsciousness that you're not aware of, and then you can see, and you make it aware, and mm -hmm. you can analyze and see. Ah, it comes from here. It comes from there. Uh, this is a memory or or something that I'm working on. Um, so yeah, it it helps a little bit to to mature. Yeah. Yeah. But now, yes. Vanya, yeah. um, tell me what what are the wishes for you still for the future? What what do you hope to achieve? I know you're talking about this recording that you still want to do when you come back from Serbia, but uh, what else is on your wish list hmm. I have um a quite, quite a wish list <laughs> no I just I just I'm so happy of, of that I'm doing what I'm doing now hmm. and I just want to continue I just want to continue making music I want to maybe if if I have time I would really love to get more into the folk music from uh, from different countries to do a little research there 
and maybe combine this this music. Also, this Balkan um, jazz uh, trio um, is. I had an idea to start to arrange the songs from uh, from Balkan, mm -hmm. but to play it with different from uh, with musicians uh, from different cultural background. Oh yeah. So that they would bring something of their own. And then they will, we will make like a cultural mix. Yeah. That is my that is my vision, that is my wish to do I that. I love that. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and, that has to and, happen. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope I hope that will happen. Like I don't know from uh, to, and I, to I just want to throw an Afrikaans song in there. Yes, yes. <laughs> Like to use, like to use also really different instruments and yeah. um, that are not typical for from where I come from. But to play with those instruments, um, the music from from my childhood or from my yeah. region, for example. Mm -hmm. And I simply want to learn more. I want <laughs> my wish. I want to learn more and. Um, as a teacher, I my that is also the same wish. I simply want to to progress and to to develop myself uh, into a better teacher. To um, I want to help people from music and for teaching to guide them wherever they want to go. That's beautiful. That's really beautiful. <laughs> but now, um, thank you so much for your time. And oh, thank for you. And talking and for sharing all this uh, with me. And, and really, I, I think uh, you are doing great uh, the way you approach your teaching. And, of course, I think a student can be very lucky if they can have you <laughs> as a teacher. <laughs> 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 but yeah, please let me know when when you have this band and these um and also I would love to hear this recording that you're doing the end of the year. So that would be great to hear. Yes, I will I will send you something that now I'm I'm working on. It's almost Yes, please. I <laughs> I so love your voice, really. So oh, beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Fanya, have a lovely weekend. You too, and thank you for the opportunity. It was it lovely was, to talk with you. Well, it was a great pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for oh, your my time. My pleasure. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Okay, bye. Bye.